Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a pretty awesome creation that was actually accomplished by one of these scientific teams that seems to have created what the scientists refer to as a cell replica. The tiny little thing you see right here that seems to mimic a typical cell, at least to some extent. It's able to absorb and it's also able to release a lot of different particles. Something that up until now was more or less impossible. So let's talk a little bit more about all of this and let's actually discuss why this is probably somewhat important. First of all, for many years now the scientists have been trying to create the so-called artificial cells or artificial life. And even today there have been quite a lot of different successes in trying to create something that is able to mimic life to some extent. There actually have been quite a lot of various uh, somewhat successful or even quite successful experiments in the past and you can read more about them in this Wikipedia article you see right here. But one of the most successful and one of the more interesting experiments in the last few years was the one we discussed on the channel in one of the previous videos where the scientists were able to create an artificial thingamajig that was sort of acting like a typical cell in terms of reproduction and in terms of somewhat normal growth but it didn't really do anything else except for that. So basically it only reproduced and only divided, which I guess is one of the potential definitions of life, but it still lacked a lot of other features of a typical cell, with one major feature of course being the fact that it didn't actually eat anything, it did not consume energy, and it also did not undergo anything on the inside. And so in order to create a fully functioning artificial cell, it needs to also have a lot of other features. And one of these abilities is of course to somehow try to use some sort of a chemical reaction on the inside in order to create energy and in order to continuously survive and to reproduce and to do a lot of other things that require energy and various chemicals. But before this can even be started, these molecules have to somehow enter the cell itself which naturally means that this artificial cell has to be able to perform what's known as the active transport. And this by itself is an extremely important feature of pretty much all life on Earth. It essentially provides an ability for all cells to take things from the outside and to put them on the inside even though there is usually some sort of a repulsive force and vice versa. It allows the cells to expel things from the inside even though they want to stay on the inside. And pretty much all cells on planet Earth use a relatively similar principle for this. First of all, they usually use some sort of a pump such as for example the sodium potassium pump that is normally powered by what's known as the ATP or adenosine triphosphate which is basically like this universal unit of energy in a lot of different cells in our bodies and a lot of other bodies um, on planet Earth. And just as a side note, this really important molecule for the most part is produced inside an organelle known as mitochondrion you see right here. And so these are basically like energy generators inside our cells. And so for a typical cell, independent of what kind of a cell it is, active transport is absolutely essential for its survival. And it's done in a lot of different complex ways. But when it comes to artificial cells, it's never really been achieved successfully. Up until now, no one has ever been successful at trying to create an artificial way of allowing various tiny systems, such as for example artificial cells, to have some sort of an active transport. At least active transport that actually worked. But all of this sort of changed after this paper, or after this study, that for the first time was able to successfully create so-called cell mimics that are able to absorb or release certain compounds based on a certain trigger. In this particular case, the trigger was a certain type of light. And interestingly enough, the cells in this case, or the cell mimics, didn't just absorb or release things, they were also able to process them as needed. Which means that there's actually quite a lot of potential application for this in a lot of different ways. We'll talk a little bit more about potential applications right after I explain to you how all of this works. So first of all, the actual process of creation of these mimic cells is available in the links in the description below. In this particular case, the scientists explain exactly how a lot of these cell mimics were made and how, in theory, one could replicate the results, producing something similar to this. Now in this case, the scientists refer to these objects as core shell colloids. And when placed in the right mixture, they tend to essentially inflate and turn into something that resembles a cell, at least the outside of a cell. 
And once inflated, these cell mimics will be spherical in shape and will be relatively similar in size to a typical red blood cell. And this spherical membrane in this case is made using a specific polymer described in their paper. But unlike a typical red blood cell, their cell mimic also has a tiny hole on the inside, which sort of makes these mimics look like this. And depending on what exactly is being absorbed, the hole itself can also be different in size, which means that these mimic cells can in theory be used for a lot of different purposes and can be used to absorb very specific substances. But this particular hole or this nanochannel, as the scientists refer to it, is the main principle for the active transport. This is how the matter is exchanged and how it's able to imitate the active transport inside a typical cell. But how exactly does the transport work? There's no ATP and there's obviously no mitochondria. And so to make this work inside this hole, the scientists also added a very specific chemically reactive component that usually is activated using various types of light. And when certain frequencies of light hit this particular component, it ends up triggering a chemical reaction that turns on this pump, allowing it to either suck in or suck out certain materials, in essence creating active transport. But when the light is switched off, the active transport stops accordingly. And interestingly, the actual videos of this are really brilliant. They sort of show you how all of this works. And so in this case, it becomes quite obvious that the cell mimic is very, very good at absorbing things once there is light. When there is no light, it doesn't do anything. And so this is actually a really interesting discovery or a really interesting creation that potentially has a lot of different applications. One of these applications that have already been explored in this particular study is absorbing various somewhat dangerous bacteria. So for example, in this case, these cell mimics are able to actively absorb E. coli bacteria. They're eating them and they're eating them to the point where the bacteria stay on the inside and are never able to leave again. And the potential applications here are absolutely limitless. This can be used for different types of cleanup. This can be used for a lot of medical reasons. And this can also be used in a lot of other very interesting ways where the bacteria have to be removed from a certain environment. And remember, because the actual holes can be changed in size and the actual pump can also be changed as well, all of this can be modified in order to absorb a very, very specific bacteria or a very specific particle, which can then be trapped inside these cell mimics for a very long time. Or they can also be processed as needed. Or something entirely different can be done. For example, these um, cells can contain some sort of a medicine, and this medicine can be released when certain conditions are met. For example, certain levels of pH, or once again, in certain light conditions. So in this case, this can be also a very interesting way of delivering different drugs. And so far, from all of the tests in different environments, pretty much every single test was more or less successful. So this is a really exciting discovery and a somewhat interesting creation that could potentially lead to some incredible new advances in science. But I guess what makes this really exciting is really the fact that a lot of this can be easily controlled with simple triggers, things like illumination or changes in pH. And these particular cell mimics can easily capture, concentrate, store, move around, transfer, or deliver various types of molecules to various locations anywhere. Somewhere in the body, somewhere in the ecosystem, or from one body part to another. So this is an absolutely incredible discovery. Or I guess not a discovery, but a creation. A creation the scientists refer to as the hollow colloids. Or hollow colloids with a micropore to be more exact. And since the actual production, mixing and modification of these uh, microcolloids seems to be more or less accessible to many different labs around the world, it means that in the next few years, in theory, this could lead to a lot of different advances. Now, we're still probably not going to be creating any actual artificial cells just yet, the cells that are able to do everything a typical cell can, but one step at a time. If we combine a lot of the different research from a lot of different studies, the scientists will probably get a little bit closer to creating something absolutely incredible. Now, is it going to be dangerous? Probably not. A lot of these cell mimics have an extremely limited ability to do things, and they also have very limited lifespan. But their ability to make our life easier and to possibly create incredible medicine is really the reason why a lot of this is done today and why a lot of scientists are so excited about the prospects of having an actual artificial cell. 
But I guess what makes these particular artificial cells interesting is that pretty much nothing in this is in any way borrowed from anywhere in nature. All of this is entirely artificial. And so in that sense, this is actually as science fiction as it gets. Creation of a potential artificial life. And so it looks like we just came one step closer to making this happen. And so if one day we're able to create some sort of an artificial multicellular life, it's very likely going to be based on concepts from this particular study. The study that as always you can find in the description below. But I guess until someone else creates something even more impressive, or until we discover something else in regards to artificial life, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out the videos and all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.